opportunity of me talking here. <coughs> and actually, this is a joint work with Dan and Hans. This is most of this, this work it was part of I did here at IMPA, and I would like to acknowledge the, them. But okay, in a final day, I decided to solve a human problem, and here I would like to share a tiny bit of what I found. So uh, the initial model was a model from, from petroleum engineering, and <coughs> basically, two-phase composition, compositional thermal flow in a porous rock, and the usual simplifications and physical quantities is evaluated at uh, definite pressure, and no thermal expansion for liquids, Darcy flow, no gravity. And the liquid phase is sort of a mixture of uh, dead oil and uh, volatile oil. And just to show the mass balance equations, the usual suspects, just the concentration, saturations, Darcy flow, and a mass balance part that is related to, well, to the fact that the oil can change phases. Uh, the dead oil is, <coughs> uh, is just dead. It cannot go to the gas phase, and it does not have any mass transfer. But actually, we are interested in certain uh, thermodynamic, thermodynamic equilibriums, and I will focus on just one. The two-phase flow, well, the usual assumptions, give phase rule, and Claes's clapper and how it look, how it rule out that is a good assumption for this kind of model, ideal mixing, enthalpy conservation, and we get this model. It's not the by far, not the, it's not the most complex model we can find, but it is a little bit of a trouble to understand what's happening here. And what I tried to solve was the injection problem, which is basically a human problem, in which you get the, the PD, and you're supposed to have a hawk filled with some mixture here, try to inject another mixture, and see what's happening. If this slide does not make much of a sense for all of you, it's because it shouldn't. It's just to get to, to provide a bit of a picture what a human solution is all about. So when you try to solve a problem like that, you get a lot of curves that bound some regions, and for each region, you get kind of a Riemann solution. And the Riemann solution is more or less like that. It gets an initial state, a final state, and it is a concatenation of more elementary waves between the first and the last stage. But actually, things are not like that because when you turn, change, let's say, the right stage, you get another part pattern of solutions. And here I am showing just one pattern in some, some set of the state space. You can find, let's say, four kind of four different pattern of patterns of solutions. And you can see that things can get very complicated. Actually, I am just showing what happens in a very small portion of the state space. It provides about 42 Riemann solutions. The complete Riemann solution is global and it, well, for all state space, all possible physical interactions. And it's actually, it's bigger than what, he, than what I provided, I wrote in, in my thesis because most of the possible cases, uh, uh, many possible cases were left as exercise for, uh, for the readers. Just don't tell them that because we, as, as far as I know, he believes that I wrote um, most of the cases. But what happens here 
is that we get a lot of information, many curves, many arcane uh, letters that do have a meaning, sadly. And to communicate this human solution, you have to, well, use all of them. And inside this, this human solution, we found something weird. A structural stable human solution without the intermediate state. And by structural stable, I just meaning that you can change the left and the right states and in an open set, and it will be it, it will continue to be like that. And the purpose of my talk here is just to shed some light on this kind of issue of feature. And well, this human solution was was done using a computer, not in the sense that they need to do simulations, but some of the, let's say, wave curves were needed to, to be constructed using a computer. And this pattern is not uh, something that you can look at it and say, okay, this is natural, no, it's not natural. I felt the need to put this on a little bit more, um, um, rigorous term, and also I was asked in the past by uh, if uh, the question that uh, how could you be sure that what you are seeing in this human solution is really true? Uh, what I would, my talk now is just a partial answer to that. So. More of the same, the partial differential equations. And from now on, this is pure math. <clears throat> we begin with a system. We have a solution that is just a wave, I will call W. And we are looking for the human problem. And <clears throat> and actually, I don't like, in the specific context of the human problem, I don't like to talk about uh, partial differential equations. I prefer to use to recast them as an ordinary differential equation, which is, okay, I just prefer. And this small little function is related to everything that happens. Well, when I look at an equation like that, I can, I naturally ask myself, can I do this differentiation? Uh, of course, this, equation is just valid on the sense of dis distributions. And of, you may have two answers. The first one is yes, you can definitely <coughs> differenti differenti differentiate that in a classical sense. And you just get a characteristic, uh, an agent, pro agent problem, which agent values are just the characteristic speeds of the flow. This is, val is valid for high reflection waves and or constant states. And you can say no, you cannot do that differentiation. But okay, you have some function which its derivative is a bounded function. And in some sense, it should be something like a uh, continuous function that is similar to some piecewise linear function. And this is true, actually. And if you get this H function and just make some limits, you can recover the hankini hogan uh, relation. And if you use this formulation, it can be proved that you cannot get anything else as long as you consider your solution to be a bounded measurable, measurable function. <clears throat> well, human solutions are Can be usually can be described by curves or foliations in state space, and the usual assumptions of strict hyperbolicity and genuine nonlinearity provides some beautiful figures and the theory and a theory that um, unfortunately doesn't doesn't apply here. 
I have to make another assumptions to be able to work on those in, in this context. But I would like to, to point that the constant state is this thing. If you have um, strict hyperbolicity, you are saying that the characteristic speeds, the aging values, are different. And in this sense, you have some kind of separation between the wave fans, which are just those two. And this is what we expect to happen. Well, so what I am doing here is just considering a class of models that can provide such, such a kind of solutions. And in some sense, they are the most simple way to find these things. The models are actually a small perturbation of another kind that is usually called the KKIT models, due to Jackson Temple, Kfix, and Kranzer. And here, two things are important. This flux function and this perturbation, they, they will provide all the the stuff that I needed to, to show the results. And the basic assum assumption on them is that the first function just has a uh, non-degenerate critical point ins inside of the domain, and the perturbation alpha is something very well behaved. I am I will focus, I will just work in, uh, with alpha, uh, with the, those two, but looking for sm small alpha in some sense. Actually, this hypothesis should be dubbed the fake hypothesis because they are far from necessary to provide this kind of solutions. They just give me a way to prove what I needed to prove in a simple manner. The more natural hypothesis is related to the temple system. If you show that given a certain model, you can obtain a reduced model that is like a temple system, and it has some property on its aging value, which is just that this aging value is non-degenerate in some sense, and yet the perturbation does provide some genuine nonlinearity, then everything holds. This should be the right hypothesis, but this will be the subject of another work. And again, the building blocks are just the rarefaction waves and the shock waves. And for this kind of model, we can obtain very, of this class of models, we can obtain very simple, a very simple description. The, Aging values are just like this one. The first is very simple, and I should, you should not see that it lies on a straight line, therefore it is or still related to a temple, to some properties that were proven, proved by temple. The second one is where magic happens. I will call it the exotic family. And what will happen here is that we will get a curve in state space in which the two aging values will coincide. Of course, there is not a single way to define an aging value in this case, but the classical theory was made in exploiting the regularity of aging values. And in this sense, if you want to provide, to use, be able to use this regularity, there is a unique way to choose those as in values. They are the one that given the state space, you get a linear fiber, fiber bundle on that, that is given by the aging directions. And those aging values are those that make this fiber bundle smooth. Okay. And so, uh, most of the the actual work 
lies on the Ezad family, and you needed to choose to these properties. And basically, uh, I am looking for. <coughs> I, I am trying to, to make my life simpler by reducing the state space in such a way that the, all this stuff that happens is related to a single, singular point and to a certain coincidence curve that will contain the singular point. And along this coincidence curve, the aging directions match. They are, <coughs> they are parallel and <coughs> except at the, the singular point and uh, I would like to emphasize uh, uh, one of the reasons to work with these axiomatic kind of 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 way is that if you reduce your problem to a certain singular uh, uh, in, to a certain uh, set of of models that satisfy some certain singular conditions, you can exploit two very useful uh, mathematical, uh, uh, let's say. It's not a theory, it's just the way of doing things. The first one is that if you can say something that is in a point, you get some infinitesimal uh, information, you can usually exploit this information, making it, making some, some affirmations to what happens in, the, in a local set. And this is basically just, just relates to the use of certain, of uh, inversion function theorem, in, this is a case. If if you can, if you get if you look at the points in which the one of the aging aging directions vanish, uh, in such such a point is non-degenerate in a single way, and if this happens, you the flux induced by this aging family is. Can can be completely described by the hartmann grabman theorem, theorem, which is just a pretty strong form uh, of the inversion function the theorem. And for those who are concerned with this, this stuff, the coincidence curve must necessarily be a part of the inflection wave, inflection curve. So this is. The picture for rarefaction waves nearby the singular point, they are just spir uh, spirals. And well, the fact that they behave this way, they, they behave this way is related to the singular point. Other, the other important part of the Riemann solution are the shock. Shock, shock waves, which by it, they, their turn are related to the shock curves that are part of the Hankine Hugonio locus. And again, since, well, okay, first a uh, very uh, obvious observation if you can, if you can write the Hugonio locus of such of any point as the product of two functions, you should of course have the some kind of decomposition of the Huguenot locus. But this function h shows a nice property that can be exploited. Because if I want to say something about the behavior of the class of systems, I just need to first find find a system that is very well behaved, that they can do all the computation, and I, I'm just trying to transfer the information that I have from one system to all of the others. I just need to use this kind of uh, homotopy function that just, just move, pushes the regularity of the 
let's say the h0 function would be this function with this alpha equals zero. And this is, this is still related to the Blake Temple system. And I can completely understand what's happening here. And I just needed to push this to all the other models at the same time. Again, this is a nice property of working with those uh, axiomatic key, uh, in this axiomatic way. And the proof is still very simple. You just need to, that, to show that some continuous function bounded away from zero remains bounded away if you just perturb it slightly. And this is a picture of the Hugonio locus, Hugonio lossi. And those generally are just uh, technical stuff to make sure that this Hugonio lo lossi is, is regular away from the singular point. Uh, actually, it is regular in all the state space, excluding the singular point, but the proof is a little bit more involved. And this picture foreshadows an uh, important part of this human solution, which is the part that you need to be build bigger, <coughs> bigger solutions from smaller ones. And the process to do that is just to consider composite waves. And composite waves are just the ones in which some speed coincide with another. And this, this is some kind of a property of the human solutions that sometimes you can relate algebraic properties like coincidence of speeds to some geometric properties, which is the tangence, tangency of wave curves in state space. And the more, well, the way to do that is to use the Bethwanderf theorem, which just says that, that you have some, if you have some non-degenerate coincidence of, of speeds, the wave curves will touch at each other and you can, do, you can do your stuff. But this does not hold in this model, this class of models. Not because the, this, this class of, of solution or this class of models is, does not allow this. Okay, this class, of, this kind of solution is not related to to this coincidence, but because I excluded this kind of 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 coincidence with the fake hypothesis, and what we needed to do is, well, is just. Um, Ex just extend the, improve the Batwender the theorem to work with uh, the kind of composite waves that you need. And for that, we must look at the extensions. And the extension is just a way to, well, I, here I should say that I need, need to, to find points in which are in the, in the locus of the other, but with speeds that are matched by the other family of characteristic speeds. Instead of that, I will just say that the height way to do that is to look at the, the points in the Huguenot that bifurcate. This is what is called the secondary bifurcation set. And in this case, in this kind of models, one can show that this set is actually a smooth manifold and not even remotely related to, to topological change in the Hugo News. And if you have that, I will just show in pictures what you can prove. First, you need to, to begin with a state that works. And here, there is just a lax construction. You get from any left state, you can go with a higher fraction to an intermediate constant state and reach this, the right state with another elementary wave, but if we look just at the left side of this last curve, things change a little bit. And this is more or less how the, the, the thing goes. If you get any point here, the higher fraction wave, we need to, to move upwards, but it will not be able to reach the fast wave curve. But instead, instead, you have the 
the improved version of the Bethendorf theorem, which can guarantee that for any any point in this fast wave, you can find a match, uh, point in which those two characteristic speeds are the same. And in fact, the this rarefaction wave is transverse onto this manifold. Well, if you want to prove that, the poincare benson theorem is your friend. But once you can do that, once you do that, you can find a shock that glues this slow rarefaction with f this fast rarefaction, and this shock is double characteristic, double characteristic, and you get your solution. And to show that this is structurally stable, it's just an exercise on <coughs> transversality, because if, if you begin with a large, large set here, you just get a section, and this section will be projected onto the coincidence curve. And since we know that in, co in the coincidence curve, the two families are parallel, you can extend this with the long tubular uh, long uh, neighborhood tub tubular theorem of ODEs to all these, all of this curve, and it's just a matter of not seeing that for any point in a, mm, a small set here, you will always be able to do this construction. And of course, the solution is uh, one continuous as well, just, uh, just more pictures to, to, to just il illustrate this fact when you move from the left or to the right of the, the set that works, you get that this slow shock just gets uh, closer to this fast wave fun until it finally cross the wave fun and it continues going straight to the, to the right until it, to, it consumes this slow rarefaction uh, wave and the constant states appears again. So, uh, what happens? With this work, I try to, to remove of any shadow of a doubt that, uh, to prove without any shadow of a doubt that these kind of solutions do happen. But this, this, this work is just a first step in this, in this, case, this direction. It don't, does not show what happens, what triggers the, the, this kind of behavior in the original model. But actually, if you use the real hypothesis, it's very easy to see that the, in the original system, you can disregard almost everything and just need to look at the, which would be the reduced uh, temple system. And in this sample system, the aging value to consider is just a fractional flow function divided by the saturation. And once you know that, you can ask, how can we, we one find this kind of uh, non-degeneracy condition? And this simply follows by taking the, the derivative of this aging value and observing that the, as long as the the viscosities are, are not the same, you should be able to find this solution. Actually, in this case, the, what really triggers the, the, this behavior is the fact that you have a mixture of, de of dead and light alkane, and if you mix the temperature increases, you get more dead alkane inside the inside the composition, but at the same time, the overall viscosity is reducing. This provides the kind of, of, of critical criticality that we need. And once you know that, you may easily see that this is not a property of this particular model, but of any, almost any models in this class, even in bigger classes that may contain another phases and so on. And actually, this can, it's, uh, future work that you can use the real hypothesis to to look for similar features in other systems, but maybe the most important thing is the one that I will not be able to talk today, which is the nature of such Riemann solutions. In this case, they are not the most uh, interesting ones, 
because in this here, what it just do is that you get, you may begin with oil, with the same saturation in the left and right states, you just make the temperature different. And when you try to move this oil, what you get is that, well, what you expect is that the gas, which has a bigger mobility, to go away while the oil keeps behind. But this is not exactly what's happening because the gas is trying to move, to move ahead of the oil, but the oil has almost the same speed and you get some kind of entanglement. The, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole wave behave as a single entity. And it is a little bit strange because you say that you can begin with the same saturation of oil in the side and the other, and just because of some kind of energy, or thermal energy is being transferred, let's say, Hoglis say that the, the buck leverage is just kinetic energy, is being transferred in a, some definite way to the, as kinetic energy to the oil, you are actually doing something that is a little bit weird. You can just, with kinetics, you can separate gas from oil in some pretty good sense. But this is not the only thing that you can, you can look, you, that you, that, that should be looking for. Uh, even here, another example of this kind of, of behavior has appeared in a talk given yesterday by, I'm sorry if I mispronounce her name, uh, Negar. She showed a very uh, related case in which you get the injection of water with a light alkane and get almost complete recovery from that, which is not the same kind of way, but based on the same principle that we exploit. This, the resonance between different, different families or, let, or let's say different uh, can exploit the change of energy between different sources to, to get some good stuff done. This should be the, the main focus of this work, but instead I felt the urge to show that this stuff is really happens before doing that. Okay, this is what I was supposed to say. Thank you very much.